Hi, I'm Joa Carvalho, and this is Bridge the Atlantic. Hey, Bridgers, we are here with another Patreon exclusive Encore episode for you, and we are joined today by mastering engineer Joa Carvalho. Awesome. Uh, Joa, can you tell us, based on your experience, how can artists work most successfully with their mastering engineer to achieve the best results? What can they do to make sure they achieve exactly what they're looking for before, during, and after the mastering process? Wow, tough question. Because, um, it's that, yeah, there's a lot to that question. Um, well, I, I guess, first of all, you have to, you have to have some serious trust in, in, in the guy that you're working with, you know? So if you're, if you're working with a mastering engineer, just, you got to let him do his thing for sure. Um, and hopefully that just because of the experience that that engineer has, they're, they're going to bring something pretty cool to the table. And so often that really means like we talked about this before, but it, it means the mastering engineer doing very little, you know? So the, the artist or sorry, the, the engineer and producer need to be con- pretty confident in themselves too. They need to kind of put together a really awesome piece of, of audio that that's, you know, virtually there. You don't want, you don't want to leave it to the mastering engineer to re- to invent it. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you, you do, but you do need to have, have faith in the guy as well too. You need, you need to trust him, you know, put, put it out there and, and let him do his thing. I think a lot of times, especially younger engineers and producers, they might, um, uh, you know, just be so hands-on and like really want, want to, you know, kind of dictate exactly what, what they're looking for. And uh, yeah, I think you need to let the, the engineer, the mastering engineer just kind of do his thing, you know, and, uh, engineers, uh, yeah. I mean, I think that answers your question. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I'd like to dig a little deeper and, uh, mm-hmm you know, should they be in the session? Should they, should they not be there? You know, do you like having artists sit in while you're, while you're mastering their album or can that be a big distraction? Um, uh, other than it taking a lot longer <clears throat> to do because you're just, you, you know, every time you do something, you talk about it a bit, you know, whereas if you're, if I'm just doing it on my own, it, it's just, it's really kind of, it, you, you go with that flow, you go with that creative flow. And so I think on some levels, and I'm not trying to discourage people from attending sessions because I like it when people attend sessions. It's kind of a lonely job sometimes. So often I'm just working on my own. Um, but um, so, yeah, I don't want to discourage people coming. But it, there is something about just letting the mastering engineer do his thing um, that that I think there's it, there's some a, a bit of a better creative flow that happens for the mastering engineer, you know. Right um, when uh, when Brett Brett Zalahi just uh, for people who don't know what I'm talking about another mastering engineer that that works with you at your at your studio he, he mastered yeah. one of my EPs nearly a decade ago I sat in on it but I knew right from the beginning not to interrupt not to jump yeah. in oh what are you doing I was there and if he turned around and said what are you in is that cool whatever I'd be like yeah you know but I actually just wanted to be part of the experience yeah. I wanted to be there I you know it's I'm making an yeah. album I want to be, I want to experience as much as possible so. And I feel like, and I, and I love, I love everything about production and engineering too. So I, I just kind of watching too, you know, learning from it. Yeah. But I think it's important to, you know, as an artist and, and I'm saying this as the artist, don't fucking, you're paying someone to do this. Don't interrupt them. Don't kill yeah. their flow. You know, <laughs> let them do I think their that, thing. That is what it is really. And I, and it's, I think there may, maybe there's some sort of unwritten rule out there, but I think most of the times when people do attend the session, they're like, they just kind of just hang out in the back and. Mm-hmm. Or they're or they're asleep really quick. One of the two, but you know they they <laughs> but they um but yeah they are kind of pretty respectful. You know it's just every once in a while. You know I'm just saying I, I was only saying um to maybe put the trust in the mastering engineer if it was a, a really young artist and they were if you're if they're looking if you're looking for an answer. But but um no I, I think most people are pro- get that they are they just need to let their guy do their their thing first and then when they get it home that's when they're really going to get they're going to really hear it. They're not going to in, in the mastering room. It's like, Oh my God, it sounds huge. It's, it's like, Oh, it sounds perfect. But it's really when you get it home that you go, Oh, okay. I see what's happening now. I, now I can compare it. Now I can really do these things and you know, the, the comparisons and, and that's when you really tell what's going on. Um, so you, you, yeah, you, you're only going to really make a, a, a good decision 
when you get it home and listen to it or listen to it in your car or something. I think it's the mm-hmm. control that comes into play, yeah. right? Like I, I definitely, I, I'm very controlling over my art, but at the same time, I put that control into who I'm choosing to do what. And yeah. once I've given that power over to that person, I let them do their job. That doesn't mean like I might not have an opinion on this or that, but you know, you're bringing someone in, trust them or don't bring that person and bring someone else you can trust. And if there's no one you're going to trust, yeah. then you got a problem. You know what I mean? So that's, yep. that's what I would say. I mean, cause, cause some people might look at being controlling of your art as a bad thing. I don't think it is at all. I think you should have control of your art, but if you're bringing someone in, let them do their thing. Exactly. Because they're just going to make you sound better anyway. <laughs> That's their Stop. job. Totally. Yeah, That's their job. Yeah, exactly. Person, you get yeah. show up. We hope you enjoyed this Encore episode. For more from Virgil Antic, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you want to pick up one of our shirts, visit our website and use the coupon code BTA Rocks to receive 20% off your order. This episode was brought to you by Social Surge, your source for social media marketing and online music promotion. Check them out because they do our Ross. They keep the show alive. And if you would like to sponsor the show and become an official bridger, join us on Patreon from as little as a dollar per month. Not only will you be able to showcase your band or brand to our amazing audience, but your support will allow us to keep bringing you weekly videos here at Bridge the Atlantic. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.